Welcome back to the place where all your dreams come true, CampingGearTV.com. I'm Josh. I'm Ben. With us as always is our good friend, Garrett Jenkins. Today we have a very, very special episode for you. Folks, you're going to need to put the kids to bed, I believe, because mm -hmm. this episode is for adults only. Yes, it is. Where we're taking a look at a book mm -hmm. available on the Nook. Okay. I don't know if that's true. I just go on right. a rhyming thing. All right. Uh, this is from Wilderness Press. This is a little racy, but right. I mean, we got to get into it, right? Yeah. It's called Sex in a Tent, people. Which, if you're into camping and you're of legal age yes. with someone else of legal age, yes. then it's possible you've considered doing such things before. Yep. And possible. It, possible. I know I have. I know I have. Never? No. Not once? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Um... I, ha I do have a child now. You do? Yeah. Right. So I've had sex one time. Really? Yeah, but it wasn't in a tent. That's awesome. But it was it, just the one time. So, Pretty uh, amazing. Yeah, this is a really interesting book. You know, I, I wouldn't, when I first saw the book, I just, I could have swore that a man wrote this book. Right. But that's not the case. The author is Michelle Waitsman. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, Michelle is a woman. Hmm. Yeah, it's a good woman's name. Interesting. Yes, Michelle. Um, she has a blog at loveinatent.blogspot.com where she basically huh. talks about her adventures with her special person. So she isn't just the president. She's she, also a member. she's also a client. Yeah, she's she's also a client. The book is really uh, interesting. It, it, there are some areas yeah. where it's kind of funny, and others where it's kind of serious. Are there pictures of Michelle in, in doing, there, there's one, doing the deed? No, not doing the deed. There's oh. one picture of her I'll show, but as you can see, there's one picture mm. of her in the back that looks more like a drawing. Yeah. But I'm that sure that's like, exactly what she looks like. She looks kind of like Cher. Yeah? I can see that. Mm -hmm. I think she looks like who? What is the the Hootie woman? and the Blowfish? No, oh. no, the woman uh, in Dirty Dancing and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Jennifer Grey, looks like her. I don't know who that is. Yeah, because you've never seen such films. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> well. So, anyways, this was published in 2007. You can get okay. this on Wilderness Press's Wilderness Press's website, WildernessPress.com, all right, for eleven dollars and twenty-one cents. And I know people are just dying to get into the book. Yeah, let's see what kind of stuff is in there because it I mean it can't just be like stories about Michelle's adventures, right? No, I would expect that if I bought that book, it would tell me how I can not only live a better life, sure, but also have sex in tents. It's not even just about how to have sex in a tent as far as like um, the process goes once the event is occurring. Okay. But I think it's a lot of things, information post and pre-event that are going to help make the event better. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, let me, let me yeah. read some of the copy that uh, accompanies the book on the website. Okay. Couples going into the wild usually expect to tough it out, not to get it on. But people also go outside to seek adventure, excitement, mystery, and spontaneity. Some of the same qualities also found in great sex. Hmm. We're expecting to get a lot of traffic on this episode. Sex in a Tent is a mostly fun, sometimes serious guide to love, sex, and adventure in the great outdoors in this, yeah. sorry, period. In this penetrating look at what really goes on mm. behind the tent flap, expert camper... Unintended, right? Yes, I yeah. believe so. Expert camper and outdoor lovemaker Michelle Waitsman reveals everything you need to know to fulfill your wild fantasies. So they, she, even, <laughs> she even goes through, I know, right? Wild fantasies. <laughs> yeah, sure. I thought that's what we did on Camping Gear TV. That's what I thought too, but apparently not. It's, it's all in this book. She goes everything, like some of the more serious stuff, like most romantic parks, you know, covering yeah. topics like how to smell good or be sexy in the outdoors. They're, they talk about, there's a, like a little cookbook, romantic meals. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. That Bud Light. Eat. Absolutely everything you need to know to get it on in the outdoors. Okay. So I'm, I'm just, I have a couple special things marked in here because I thought we would, uh, maybe we should take that with us next time we go out. Yeah. Um, just to, just to have something to read because we get bored. No. Oh, uh, well, maybe. I just, I, if this book goes with us, you're, you're staying in the next tent. Oh. 
All right. I, I just don't. I don't. I don't trust Gary for one. All right. So um, let's see here, boy. There's uh, so like there's a section here. I'm seeing top ten eu euphemisms for having sex in a tent. Okay, this is like Letterman's top ten list. Okay, flapping the fly. I get it. I, no, wait, wait, what? Flapping the fly. Flapping the fly. Number nine, shaking the stakes. Okay. Number eight, gathering wood. That's now, that one. one. That That's I a get. good one. That I get. Seven, sharing body heat for survival. Now, how that made it ahead of gathering wood, I Gathering mean, wood. I mean, that's, that's a tough one to beat. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> this one's pretty good. Driving in the tent pegs. Nice. So, gathering wood is my favorite so far. Driving in the tent pegs. Working. Because the, when you're having sex. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Working off the marshmallows. Mm, that's a Working off the marshmallows because of physical activity. I guess so. Keeping the bunnies awake. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Mm. Howling at the moon is number three. Number two well, is... Well, you don't want to be too loud. No, no. Well, it depends where you're at. I, well, I have no idea. Right. Each his own. Number yeah. two, painting the canvas. Oh, that's real dirty. And, and... That's kind of filthy. Yeah, number one, answering the other call of nature. How did gathering wood not get to number one? That's... I don't know. Solid list, though. Yeah, solid pre list. Pretty good. List. Yeah. Pretty good. Let's see good some Good job, other. Michelle. Yeah. Nice work. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, what else they got in there? Sexy tent games for a rainy day. Oh. Let me just read well, down. it's raining. Yeah. Let me just uh, read some of the, the names, and then you can see which one you want me to elaborate on. All right. So uh, there's a strip poker, and no, I think I we're all familiar yeah. with it. Here's a good one. Tequila pigs. Mm, let's see what other options we have. Story time. Strip battleship. Oh, that sounds interesting. Playing doctor. Nah. I never. Hmm. Truth or dare. And 69 showdown. They don't have painting the canvas? No, they... No. What, what was the last one? 69 showdown? What's that all about? It says, uh... I'm just reading what they wrote in the book. <laughs> really getting put on the spot here. Who can experience oral sex longer before reaching orgasm? <laughs> There are no real losers in this game. So as you can that's see, this... <laughs> so that's like, the game? Yeah, that's the That's game. like just the tip. Right, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of interested <laughs> in tequila pigs. These, tequila pigs. These little plastic piggies were de designed as a drinking game, but you can bring along your own rules. When you throw the pig down... What is the pig? <laughs> I don't know. Howard Lance determines what you have to do. Snout down, remove a piece of clothing. Bump down, remove a piece of your partner's clothing. Lying on one side, kiss an exposed part of your partner. Standing up, <laughs> your partner has to perform a sexual act of your choice. Time limits may apply. It's even more fun than tequila, and Man. you won't get hang up. You won't get a hangover. Man, that is solid. Yeah, that sounds like a great game. Right. So, I, I didn't know that we were going to cross the line so far in this episode here. Yeah, I, you know what? When I was reading this book. Uh, doing research. Yeah, I better clarify. Research means yes. um, going through this. I was like, oh, this will be funny. We'll read some of this stuff on the episode. Now I'm going through it, and I'm like, well, we'll see if we'll get in trouble for any of this. There's a there's a section called toys and tools. Hmm. I can read the I first know two. What that's all about. I can read the first two paragraphs if you like. Uh, all right. Sure. A lot of couples use sex toys and other extras as a regular part of their home sex life. It can be a challenge to safely incorporate you? these things. Do I what? The, the tools and stuff for oh, at I, home? A gentleman never kisses and tells. All right. True. It can be a challenge to safely incorporate these things into a camping trip and a bit of a pain to bring a large amount of regalia along with you. Or is it regalia? I like the second one. Okay. Traveling light is important for camping, after all, but that doesn't mean you have to abandon all your favorite sexual practices when you leave home. No, well, you can take them with you. The first thing to do is prioritize. Which pieces of sex gear will you miss the most if you don't bring them along? Probably consider, the swing. Consider size and weight, particularly if you are backpacking. <laughs> I can't yeah, make it through can't bring the swing backpacking. Yeah. Perhaps one dildo will do instead. Is that what they say? That's what it says. Interesting. Of your, Interesting. Instead of your whole collection. 
Just one? Just one. Better if the trip is a short one, just the favorite one. Yeah, if the trip is a short one, just a night or two, maybe it may not even they're, be worth it. That's probably not long at all. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. It's probably for. I'm thinking that, that that dildo thing is probably for women that they're talking to. Could be. A woman wrote the book. Right. Yeah. So, I, I, I couldn't. I say sure that. don't relate to that. No, not at all. And uh, maybe we should close out with this. Uh, there's a little story. I, I haven't even read this at all. It says if a, a vibrator buzzes in the forest, will anybody hear? Uh, hmm. This one always gets me. Are you interested in it, or should I look for something else? I mean, I guess I'm interested in it. She's got this book divided up into a bunch of different sections on, like, talking about everything from, like, positions to games to equipment. One of the things she spends a fair amount of time on is keeping, keeping clean in the outdoors. Important. Very much so. But uh, maybe that's, maybe people should read the book to find out about that part. Which part? The keeping, keeping clean. clean. I'm not yeah. going to read any of that bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, why don't I? I'm, I'm just, it's uh, four short paragraphs. I'll read this story and we'll close out. What's this about? If a vibrator buzzes in the forest, will anybody hear? I've not, I didn't read this, so I don't know if it's going to be good. I was just interested in the title and had it marked. Okay. Here we go. We have a few sex toys at home. We both enjoy using them on each other. And they really add to our lovemaking. So if we go on vacation, we always bring at least one toy along, just for fun. After all, that's when we really have time to enjoy sex. When they're camping. When they're camping. Yeah. One of the first times we went camping together, we brought our bullet vibrator, since it's nice and small. It's also waterproof, so we could wash it up easily. We thought we were pretty clever, actually. Our campsite was pretty close to our neighbors, but we figured we'd just wait until they went to sleep. About an hour after the tents on the other side went dark, we all got cuddly and started making love. Hmm. My wife pulled out our vibrator and turned it on. It was so loud, it woke up the neighbors. I'm not kidding. Must have been like a gas-powered... Yeah, like a... Ah! Like start up the generator, right. Claude. Right. <laughs> Claude. The light came on in the tent next door, and I could hear them asking, what, what the expletive was that noise? I started giggling as she quickly turned it off and we sat in our dark tent, hearts racing until they settled back down again. We ended up putting it away for the rest of the trip, and next time we brought a nice, quiet ostrich feather instead. What the, what's that? An ostrich? An you know, ostrich feather? Yeah. Just a, a feather of yeah. an ostrich? Yeah. Oh, I thought maybe that was like a slang term for huge... Never mind. Yeah, I don't know. So anyways, um, we really hope you've enjoyed this, this episode. It's been educational on, on both our parts. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's a really uh, funny, entertaining, interesting book with some nice, uh, nice caricatures in it, illustrated by Ann Mia. Good job, Ann. Yeah, really fantastic. I'll post some pictures that are in here. Really, really good. I'm not sure what else to say. If, if you're looking to have sex in a tent, this really may help increase your chances uh, of doing such a thing. And I imagine if you are successful on your endeavors, that you will end up having a, probably a better camping trip. And you'll know who to thank. Right, exactly. So, you know, make sure you drop us a note when uh, you end up scoring a little on your next camping trip. Yeah. Okay. Let Give, us know. Show us some love. Send us some pictures. And uh, we will be sure to bring, maybe, maybe what this is a calling to is to increase the latest and greatest in outdoor gear that we look at. Right. You know, because I'm... I'm beginning to see that there's uh, some other gear, apparently, that is being taken to the outdoors that seems to be a necessity for some. We might have to look into that. Yeah, suggestions would be useful. So, But until then, he is Josh, he is Gary, I'm Ben, we are CampingGearTV.com.